today we're going to reflect on two suttas on the same topic, on the uh, reflection on death or death meditation. So the first talk is called Death Meditation 1, and the second talk is Death Meditation 2. You can listen to the two short talks one after the other, or you can just listen to one, or rather look at one of them, and then kind of do your own practice. The first sutta we're going to look at is, is in chapter 5 of 148, ST 48.5, Attaka Marana Sati Sutta 1, or the Patama Attaka Marana Sati Sutta. The first eight discuss on the mindfulness of death. This is found in A 8.73, Akutara, the Book of Eights, Sutta 73. The theme is the meditation of death should be done with every breath. Now this is a very well-known teaching on the nature of meditation. In other words, our attention should be directed to the object moment after moment. So this is a reminder, a very important, very beautiful reminder for us in this important practice. Now before I start, let me say first of all that the death meditation is a very positive meditation, although we say we're talking about death, it's, uh, it reflects reality, something that sooner or later will happen uh, because we have so much attachment, we rather not talk about it. But just because we reflect on death doesn't mean death will come sooner or, or there'll be fear. On the contrary, the reflection on, de on death helps us to see things in perspective, in, in, in its true reality. So that we value what is impermanent, we value our life, we are careful in our actions, so that in time to come, our rebirth will be a good one, and more importantly, we will attain stream winning in this life itself, if not even the higher stage of sainthood. So the reflection in permanence, in other words, is uh, re reflection on death, is reminding us on the urgency of our efforts to better ourselves, to develop our minds, and to attain at least stream winning in this life itself. So, in other words, when we direct our mind to this idea of death, we are asking ourselves, after the reflection, what am I doing now? Am I doing the right thing? And this is especially the teaching given in the next sutta, which we will look at in a moment. Now let's look at this first sutta. The translation is on page 115. The first eight discourse on the mindfulness of death, A8.73. At one time, the Blessed One was staying in the brick house at Nadika, or sometimes a place is called Nyatika. <coughs> there the Blessed One addressed the monks. He chose Bhante, the monks replied to the Blessed One in essence. Then the Buddha says, we choose. The mindfulness of death, when cultivated, grown, is of great fruit, great benefit, plunging into nirvana, ending in nirvana. So there you are. This is the opening statement the Buddha is saying. If you properly do the reflection on death, it can actually bring about nirvana. Of course, some the question may arise in your mind even now, how does this happen? So just uh, to briefly tell you, because it's not that we mentioned this sutta, is when we reflect on death, 
we have this, we feel this sense of urgency that we need to uh, deepen and strengthen our efforts in mindfulness in our drive towards awakening. And uh, when we regularly reflect on death, it is also a perception of impermanence. So we're creating this wonderful, wholesome, habitual karma, which pushes away lust and desire, negative thoughts, or we can easily overcome them if we put our minds to it. So no matter what negative uh, habits we may have, this new, more powerful habit will overcome those negative uh, tendencies. So when we come to the end of uh, our life, or even in this life itself, we may be able to attain stream winning, if not certainly at the moment of passing away. And once you attain stream winning, it's just a matter of at most seven more lives to come, you will attain Nirvana. It's so just one simple way of understanding it. So in other words, it's nothing magical here, it's not a ritual, it is hard work in a sense, you need some dedication in your practice, but it's not too difficult. So then the Buddha goes on to explain the statement he has made. Um, so the Buddha continues and says, you bhikshus cultivate the mindfulness of death. So here we have an instruction that does the minds. Cultivate the mindfulness of death. Then he explains, then he asks the monks, how should this be done? Uh, when this was said, or rather, when the Buddha said this, the monks responded each in their own way. When he, this was said, a certain monk said this to the blessed one, I, Bhante, cultivate the mindfulness of death. Okay, so here we see a kind of interaction, a dialogue. The Buddha is talking to the monks, kind of also responding. Then the Buddha asked the monk, but how big should do you cultivate the mindfulness of death? Here Bhante says the monk, I do this, I do it thus. Indeed, should I live only a night and a day, I would wisely attend to the Blessed One's teaching. Much indeed would be done by me. This uh, thus Bhante uh, cultivate the mindfulness of death. So the first monk says, well, um, even if I live for just one day and one night, I will, I will reflect in that way that my life is just one more day to go, one day and one night. Then another monk says, I too, Bhante, cultivate the mindfulness of death. And then the Buddha asks again, okay, tell me how do you do it? Then this man says, yeah, uh, here, Bhante, I do it thus. Indeed, should I live only a day, I would wisely attend to the Blessed One's teaching. Much indeed would be done by me. Thus, Bhante, I cultivate the mindfulness of death. So the second man says, well, I'll reflect as if I have only one more day to live. But the first monk says one day, one night, he has one more day, or in our modern lingo we we'll say half a day if you like. So here uh, in ancient India they talk of day, night. Then a third monk says, okay, it's okay, says one day, this is how I practice it. Uh, here should I live for only half a day, right? So it, maybe I will reflect, only have half a day more to go. So this is how I reflect uh, on perception of, of this, uh, mindfulness of death. And then another monk uh, uh, responds and says, okay, I practice in this way. This is section 12. Indeed, should I live just the time it takes to eat a single arm's meal? Right? This, so it's even shorter still, maybe half an hour. Probably it's real slow, maybe it looks slightly longer. So the time is getting shorter, this reflection on, on death. Then the fifth monk says, uh, Here, Bhante, 
I do it thus, indeed, should I live just that time, it takes to eat half an ounce meal. Let's say, but half the time of taking, taking a meal. <coughs> I, I will reflect it that way. Maybe I'll pass away during that time, it's just a short time. Then, man number six says, Well, I, indeed, should I live for just the time it takes to chew and swallow four or five muscles, four or five mouthpieces. It's even shorter still that time, a few minutes. Then man number seven says, just the time it takes to chew and swallow a single mouthful. Right, so just one mouthful, that's even shorter. Even a few less, maybe just a couple of minutes longer perhaps. And then monk number eight, that is the last monk whom the Buddha approves, he says, indeed should I live just the time it takes to breathe in and then out, and then out and then in. I would wisely attend to the Blessed One's teaching, and much indeed would be done by me. There, thus Bhante, uh, cultivate the mindfulness of death. So this last month says, just as I breathe in and out, and I breathe out and in, every moment of breath, in other words, I will reflect on death. So here, of course, we, we cannot do, it's difficult to do two meditations together uh, to really get a focus, you need to just do one at a time. But at the start of a meditation, it is so it, you can it's possible to combine two in other words you breathe in and then you say okay this life is impermanent death may come any time you breathe out reflect in the same way of course the, the breathing has to be slow and relaxed and peaceful in order to do this and then when you feel more peaceful you just stay calm and enjoy the peace and then when you come out of your meditation, you go back to reflection. Right, so the, the Buddha, having heard all these eight monks, he says, well, uh, monks number one to number six, in other, words, in other words, those who say they reflect a day and a night up to the one who says that he reflects the time it takes to swallow four or five muscles. He says, uh, they only slowly cultivate the mindfulness of death for the destruction of influxes. Right? So it's still all right, but it's a slow process. It's going to take a long time. But, says the Buddha, uh, monks number seven and eight, and the rest, the one who reflects uh, on the mindfulness of death the moment it takes to chew, in other words, death may come even as you chew your food, or death may come even as we breathe in and out, just during the, just that moment suddenly. That's the one. They keenly cultivate the mindfulness of death for the destruction of the influxes. In other words, if you really want to clear your mind of all the defilements, the best way is to constantly reflect on death, that it may come any time, with any breath. So there are two aspects here. One is the practice itself. It should be done regularly with every breath, or we reflect death as coming any time. Even the next moment, someone may be giving a Dhamma talk and then it passes away. So this is the first reflection on death. Thus, Bhikshu says the Buddha, you should train yourself. <coughs>